Happy 2024. Yes, happy 2024 to everybody we haven't seen on here this year yet. So we're back this 2024 with our health talks with Adam Arbor. People move, feel, and perform better. I specialize in weight loss. It's really about helping people be consistent for long enough that you can get the results that you always wanted. And, you know, it takes a lot to do that because we have to deal with the, you know, internal, external world, meaning internal, the human side of us and organizing our life and just figuring out how to make things possible. It's a process. Celebrations like your birthday or maybe, you know, um, a milestone in your life, you, you reflect and think about what your future is going to look like. And if you continue down the same path that you're on, what's that going to look like for me? Maybe it's great. It's going to be looking great because you're on track with things. But maybe you're starting with age. You do go through life and you do things. Uh, work, career, school, family, and you kind of set yourself aside. And then, you know, you wake up one day and think, geez, if I continue this way, what's my future self going to be looking back and thanking me or saying like, what the heck were you doing back then? <laughs> or, you know, currently, what are you doing now to change things? You're not liking where, where you are at this stage of life. And so we often hear people making New Year's resolutions, and statistically, we know New Year's resolutions don't work, right? It's like 80% of the people don't follow through by February. This February, it jumps to like 92%, and then we find ourselves the next year maybe in the same situation, and yeah, this is the year I'm going to do it. And I, I think a lot of times New Year's resolutions don't work because you're looking at this grand goal can become overwhelmed. Maybe you don't know the steps to take and the way our minds work. A conscious mind kind of stops you from making change because it can, can be uncomfortable. And maybe you just don't know what to do, right? Take on, you know, the traditional New Year's resolution. <laughs> Asking the question, if I continue on the trajectory that I'm on, what is my life going to look like in 5, 10, or 15 years? Anybody who is watching this video, if you've been struggling and you're at that time, and at this time of year is the time of year you think about getting started, ask yourself that question because you might find that there's a little bit of pain there that might give you some motivation. Because oftentimes people don't look forward and think that, don't ask that question that Doris was asking. You know, that, and it's a really important one because if you don't think forward and you're on a certain trajectory and you don't realize you're on that trajectory, well, you're bound to get there. But if you become aware of where you'll end up being and it's not a place you want to be, well, it might just give you a little bit of a kick in the pants to uh, start moving forward. So um, what is it specifically that you're asking if I agreed with, Doris, about the New Year's resolution, whether it worked or not? Yeah, like just, you know, if you look at it as more in the last several years, sort of like a mantra or a theme, an intention for the whole year, mm -hmm. inter intermixing and interweaving in every aspect of life. So what is your overall arching theme that's going to help to get you to that place or to achieve mm -hmm. that specific uh, goal? Maybe you want to go, th go through this year being more positive. Well, that can intertwine positive relationship with food, positive relationships with people, positive to do with finances, uh, your career. It can intertwine everywhere. And a couple of years ago, I chose health, being healthy as my overall theme. But it wasn't, it was still specific to physical health for my mobility. I was lacking. You know, and yes, weight was part of that, but it was more about mobility, being able to move, uh, keep up with my grandchildren, for example. And I wasn't necessarily intentional in other aspects. My emotional health was part of that. So sort of the physical and emotional were, were a theme, but I wasn't totally intentional with that. And so this year, we've talked about intention before. I'm making it intentionally being healthy. and more of this weaving into all aspects of life. So again, yes, healthy, you know, physical, mental, uh, emotional, spiritual, financial, yes, all of those, 
relationships, um, mm -hmm. you know, healthy home, just being more intentional about it coming up in all aspects so that I can make better choices. Is it going to be perfect? No, but that's the whole point is you get started and it might be messy, but you started. Yeah. Well, that's that's part of it, right? Is what do you do in the beginning and why? So, what I'm hearing from everything that you said there, Doris, is something that is really healthy. One, it's being intentional. Two, it's being intentional about your health, right? So you've decided you that health is of high value to you. So it's high on your value ladder, and that's the first thing is you have to know why you want your health to be at that place on the value ladder. And everything that you mentioned just now are all various aspects of holistic health, right? So if you're looking at getting healthier, then first off, your first intention needs to be, I want to be healthy. Like health has to be the intention. And then everything else below that, all these specific areas you want to be healthy in, well, you can start working on those. Now, talk, talking about whether a New Year's resolution works or not, let's first define what would you say, Doris, is working? If a New Year's resolution worked, what would that mean? Um, I, I find that just being too specific, they fail because, well, firstly, if you're looking at health, if, if the goal is, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, and maybe you achieve that, but you haven't shifted other aspects in your life to be healthy, I think that's where we see the perpetual loop of people coming back. and the same cycle repeating the weight comes back on and then some repeat the same cycle maybe you know for an event or whatever you lose the weight and that maybe fitting into that dress was your why <laughs> but if you haven't made those small daily changes i think that's how we end up with that same loop happening over and over again okay so you're saying if we get stuck in a loop that would be failure so would you agree that what you're saying is defined as New Year's resolution working is achieving the outcome goal that you're looking for? Define being intentional here. What does that mean to you both? And as an example for himself, being intentional means becoming aware of patterns and behaviors present within that construct I'm looking to, to alter. Yes, so that those daily habits, if you don't start mm -hmm. changing or you know, habit stacking on what's going well and shifting what what isn't working for you, you're going to remain in that cycle too. So yeah, totally. You have to be intentional. You have to be aware, as you said, Adam. In terms of being intentional, Richard, I think the example I'll give is this. So, you know, you, you since we're talking about, I, since I specialize in weight loss, we'll say, okay, you want to lose weight, right? There's a lot of different things that need to happen there. Um, if we're looking at, say, nutrition, there's going to have to be some type of strategy that's used in nutrition. So first you have to become aware of, like we only have awareness. So you gotta put your focus on nutrition. It's like, okay, recognize what you're doing there, become aware of the patterns and behaviors like you're talking about. You have to sift through that. You gotta figure out something <clears throat> that is going to work for you. So you have to learn about yourself, right? Because everybody has different issues that they need to deal with there are different things to sort out different strategies that'll work for them which is why i always say that individualization is important you need to have some things that are standard but individualization is necessary in terms of having a person become consistent because we all have individual patterns that will need to change and certain strategy will work for one person and not another so in being intentional it's like okay here's where i'm at with my nutrition right now this is where i need to go you might need to learn some things along the way you're going to have to make some changes you're going to have to create some new habits and taking intentional action within that area is really what we mean by being intentional because you know what new year's comes along doris why is it at this time of year where people even think about changing why, why right now New calendar, new year, new you, you just have you reflect. And one of the things that I, I saw recently in helping to kind of guide your compass for the new year is looking back. The way the brain works, if you ask yourself what, what went right 
your brain has a hard time thinking about that. If you look at what didn't go so well, what didn't I do, what was, well, crap. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You can learn from those things as part of being the process and then leave them behind. It can help you identify some of the good things that happen. Like I I saw on New Year's, um, there was somebody who had a suitcase packed and the clothes were hanging out and they were running running away and the caption was running as fast as I can away from 2023 and I broadcast New Year's Eve someone else sort of the same message about like get lost 2023 type of thing and I I thought to myself there's in a duality of life there's going to be good and bad pain suffering joy love peace like like there's a mix of things that are going to happen any year and I'm not saying that to belittle or you know minimize people who are struggling and have suffered losses or anything like that i'm not but i have to ask myself is is there nothing like not one thing that went well or that you found joy in your heart lit lit you up nothing like not not one thing i i just found that very negative mindset um i know no, you know, and every year, like I'm already looking this year, I've heard of uh, friends and family who have lost young children, elderly parents, you know, so already here it is January. So is the rest of this 2024 going to follow the trend of crap and and pain? Or are you going to find a way to figure out how uh, you react to those things uh-huh. and uh, a way to be able to move forward? Someone suggested, you know, scroll back through your your pictures or your social media where the things that you were doing uh, aligned with what you had set last your last intention for the year and if not that might be a place to start and adjust well what can i change what routine what little habit can i change right that can help me if that's still or you, you want to head this year because didn't happen last year and then look at well what did go right what did work and take that with you and start building on that and the things that didn't we all too often well what do they say about insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the the same result which maybe isn't the result you're looking for or expecting a different one some people journal looking back at what you were journaling about and you glean and learn something from that and in part, it might also be, well, maybe that isn't the thing that I wanted. Look at it and say, is that really what I, what I wanted to do or accomplish in the year? Maybe that's changed. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you've been educated. Maybe you've educated yourself. Maybe you've experienced some new things and you're on a different path now. And I think what uh, Doris is saying here is great. It's like, you have your past year. If that the person, I don't know who this was, that was on this media channel is saying you know good riddance with 2023 it's like yeah. it's a horrible example for people because you know looking back there's going to be tragedy yes um but even that person had some joy in their life you know they were feeling happy at some point in time right and at the moment they're saying that well they're obviously not taking that in consideration who knows why they're saying it? just a reflexive thing to say because they think they're maybe identifying with the suffering of every, everyone in this past year because they're probably watching the news a heck of a lot right who's steering your ship yeah, right. is it you is it people the naysayers or is it the news you know if you don't really dig in and get to know yourself or if you're working with somebody they don't get to they don't dig in enough to get to really know you then it's going to be hard to carve out a path forward you you know it's like using a gps and putting the destination in but you're you don't have any start point well there's no you can't make a path with that likewise right the news is horrible because you watch the news and you're watching things that are completely out of your control sometimes people even think they can do something about it but like most of the time stuff that's out of your control and all of that negativity is planting seeds in your subconscious whether you like it or not it gets in there right looking back to say 2023 if, if i was working with somebody and we're starting today i couldn't just say here's the plan and this is this is what we're going to do and that's it right that would not work i need to not only look at what was going on in 2023 
probably need to look at what was going on, you know, for the past <laughs> decade. We might even have to dig into some things from before that to see where things started going wrong, yeah. right? So everything from our past can be utilized. We don't want to dwell on it, but we can utilize that to get to know ourselves better. So we can meet ourselves where we're at, you know, discover what patterns we've had and work from there. You always have to to work from from where you're at and that's a big that's a problem that uh, can happen you gotta use the information from our past you get you don't want to just throw it away you want to reflect you know retrospectively analyze that information and work with that to carve out the path forward which is really important so yeah i agree with you there doris i don't know uh why somebody would say that in the news media but you know what it's on the news what else would you yeah. expect? Fear. <laughs> must be, must be so. It must have been a terrible year. <laughs> something you said there too. It's a learning process, and so when something didn't work out, you you learn from that and go on. But at least you took action, right? And same with with understanding the past. Like you said, it's not about dwelling on it, but understanding so that you can create change. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about like a lot of times people, you know, we talk about affirmations and other things, but if you don't, don't deal with issues that maybe are from your past, then you're at that point, you're just, just repressing it. So once you've dealt with things, once you have an understanding, then you could start to move forward because you become consciously aware instead of letting that subconscious, that thing that's uh, running you beneath um, your understanding and awareness it's basically running and making decisions for you well if it's if it's a negative thing then that's going to tend to be the path that you're heading and the patterns that will continue but the good news is as you know adam that you can change that mm -hmm. pattern that's been in place for probably several years and it's going to take time you've got to look in the mirror and be honest with yourself and you've got to be willing to take the action thinking of it as as a uh, progress a process and you, you you are excellent at individualizing and looking at where a person is and at kind of understanding where they it's like you have the belief in them before they have it in themselves but you also have the vision with your experience of how to get them there uh -huh. and that was another thing that i saw was well if you don't know how align yourself with someone who's done it before and who has the experience to help to guide, mm -hmm. guide you. Yeah, yeah. because the you know, first things first, self-mastery. So, you know, you want to be working with somebody that, you don't want to just be working with somebody that's done it for themselves. And to be honest, there's a lot of influencers out there that are pretty young, don't have a lot of experience and have gotten themselves in really good shape. And that's what you see online, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean that they know how to get anybody else there it doesn't mean that at all so you definitely want to work with somebody who knows how to get you to where you want to be right and and, and thank you doris for saying that because you know what it's been a learning process over the years but I've been doing this for a long time now and i i understand why new year's resolutions generally don't work now title this you know why new year's resolutions don't work Right. So I'm going to bring us back to what we we're talking about earlier here. It's like, what is working? What is not working? Let's say that not working is not carrying on long enough to potentially reach your outcome goal, right? Or to reach your outcome goal. Um, I don't like to always focus on the outcome goals because there's a lot a lot of things to focus on beyond that. You definitely want to set your targets. You want to have realistic expectations and you do want to have outcome goals, but it's more about staying in the process and ironing things out to get yourself on the path and then staying on, once you're on the path, staying on that path long enough to get to your outcome goals. Because once you are going in the right direction, you can just keep going until you get there, right? Yeah. I've done it, I've worked with so many people. It's like, that's the thing. If you can get somebody there, that's one step. The second step is keeping them there, right? And hopefully the process in getting them there is what allows for them to stay on path because, you know, if you do it right, you will learn along the way. And it's just getting everything in alignment for you 
to get on that path. And then there will be little blips because things come up in life and other things that you didn't know about yourself pop up. You never know. Sometimes people have failure of success, you know, other limiting beliefs that can pop up. So you got to deal with those things along the way. But if you can get most things on track, so you're being pretty consistent and you're continually being intentional, continually on a weekly basis, you know, analyzing things, sitting down, reflecting, and making sure that you stay on track and do that intentionally, you know, then you'll likely be consistent enough to get there. I do know a number of reasons why people get off track. That's for sure. One you already said, but I'm gonna, before I go to that one, I'm going to say, okay, first, beginning of the year, what happens? Okay, Christmas time, people overeat, right? And then after Christmas, you have a bit of time to reflect. Usually you feel guilty, you know, and then, you know, maybe you put on some extra weight. And you're thinking about that. So that's in your mind now. And then it's like, okay, I got to do something about this. And then some people will take action on it. Some people won't take action on it. Let's talk about the people that decide to take action. So there's enough pain from whatever happened in terms of gaining weight that they decided to take action. So you're taking action now. You're, but you don't know what to do. You don't have the right plan. You don't know how to follow through on that plan. So you just kind of, you just somebody that goes to the gym. So it's January. It's like, okay, I'm doing this, going to the gym. You're not sure exactly what to do. You walk in the door and you do what you think you need to do. And then Maybe over the next few weeks you get results. Maybe you don't see any. If you don't see any results, you might be completely unmotivated at that point. Or maybe it'll motivate you further. It depends on the type of person that you are. And hopefully if you're motivated further, you'll try to figure it out more. But will you actually figure it out? Who knows, right? It's not as, it's not as easy as people think. And it's not just about going to the gym and working out. So on that note, that would be not having the right plan. So if you don't know what to do to get the result that you want and you're just gonna, and you think you can just walk into a gym and that'll be the answer, well, I'm sorry to say that probably is not going to get you there because there's a number of co-founding factors that need to come together in order to allow you to get fit and healthy and lose the weight you wanna lose. So poor planning or not having the right plan is the first thing. A lot of times what happens to people is that the expectations that we have are not on point. There's a number of reasons, but it could be because you see online that somebody's saying, all right, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, right? Maybe you only have 20 pounds to lose. It's like 30 pounds to lose. Well, if you have 30 pounds to lose, you're probably not going to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. If you had, if you were like, you know, a couple hundred pounds overweight, then, you know, that's very possible. Right, so there's other factors that come into play, but you wouldn't know that if you don't know that, right? So the thing is, if you have an expectation that you're going to be losing, let's say, you think that if you work out really hard at the gym, you lose two pounds a week because you always hear that you can lose one to two pounds in a week. It's like, well, I'll work really hard and I'll lose two pounds a week. So you just go balls to the wall and <laughs> you lose, you know, 0.5 pounds. And you're like, oh man, why do I only lose? 0.5 pounds, half a pound. Why? <laughs> you're expecting to lose too. Well, guess what's going to happen if that happens a number of weeks and weeks in a row? Well, you're probably going to get demotivated, right? And, and you know what? You could go to the gym and not lose any. So you'll probably give up. And that's another thing that happens. So or hurting yourself. And then, yeah, now you're not, not able to even, you know, do, do anything. You're out of commission for weeks. Exactly, right? So we have that we've left so you know not having the right plan having expectations that are unrealistic adequate uh, tracking right so if you're not if you're not tracking your metrics certain metrics and sometimes it's individual for that as well because some things are more important to one person than they would be to another and you want to track the things that are important to you because those are the things that will motivate you if you're tracking your metrics and you're acknowledging when you're making progress, well, guess what? That creates positive emotion. You feel better. You will have momentum over time. You'll feel better. You'll feel better. You'll keep taking the actions, right? That's part of what you need to do to keep taking actions is to feel good about what's happening. And even if you don't make progress in a week, well, there could be a number of reasons for that. And sometimes you have to sit down and figure out what the reasons were and still feel good about the actions that you're taking, even though you didn't get the outcome goal you wanted, 
well, maybe you follow through on the process goals, and that's what's really important there. So a lot of little things that come into play when it comes to maintaining a, a positive attitude, which is really important to keeping you moving forward, because on the other side of that, it's negative, negative attitude, right? And we know where that gets us. Right. So, thinking about where you want to be and having that help to guide you, because if you don't know, you don't know. What you said there about the small progress, and if you're journaling, you're tracking, because of how our brains work and what we say to ourselves we often wouldn't say those things to anybody else but <laughs> we somehow say them to ourselves you can shift that negativity by doing something as simple as what you just said the tracking so you see the pro progress maybe things aren't going as you know as quickly as you thought but if you're tracking you're going to you're going to see the progress or or alternatively look at well that didn't work why and learn from it either tweak it or ditch it and or layer something else on but if you're, you're not doing that tracking the way our brains work is you're, you're going to look at the, the negative and what's not working and the more that you start to track journal acknowledge those positive things the more you're going to sh shift that mindset mm -hmm. to where you're seeing opportunity as opposed mm -hmm. to failure exactly you'll cultivate that positive mindset right you'll become more solution oriented and it's so important that's part of gaining momentum with our health is feeling better and better and part of that is going to be by cultivating that positive mental attitude which means you're going to have more faith you're going to have more faith in yourself you'll have more faith in the process right you when you feel better you make better decisions the better you feel the better decisions you make are if you're feeling depressed generally you're not going to be making the best decisions you know you're going to be in a contracted state you have a limited perception of what's happening around you, so it's not easy to make good decisions then. So yes, I think that's a really good point there, Doris. We're talking about New Year's resolutions and why they don't work, but they can work. It all depends on what happens after that New Year's resolution is made and what actions are taken, right? So unrealistic goal setting, not having the right plan, um, not tracking and acknowledge progress, which is really, really important, right? Yeah. Doris mentioned it. It's like you look at that, not only does it create a, that positive attitude over time, it's like you get a little boost every time you make progress towards a goal you set. So once if you set a goal, as you pro progress towards that, you're going to feel good. How are you going to know that you're progressing? Well, you have to have these metrics that we we're talking about earlier. And they're going to be different for different people. There's certain standard ones, but you want to have metrics that you're tracking on the regular and looking back on each week so you can Keep feeling good, keep feeling better over time and making that progress. Why people struggle in carrying forth and being consistent with New Year's resolution. Um, we've talked a little bit about a lack of motivation throughout this, so I won't get any deeper on that. Um, you were just mentioning lack of support. You know, if you've never actually been successful in a weight loss journey, if you've tried to get fit and healthy, and you've failed many times before, and you start at the beginning of the year, it's just the pattern that you have. What is it that you think is gonna make a difference this year, right? You might be missing certain keys that somebody else might be able to show you, right? If you don't know what you need to do, and you've been going through this pattern for a long time, then maybe it's time to actually look to somebody else for support. And to be honest, not even just support, but also accountability, because, what a lot of people yeah. need, especially in the beginning, is accountability, right? And without that, it can be very difficult, especially if you're, you know, in a in a tough place. You know what I mean? Like when when things don't seem to be going your way and it's been a struggle for you. Well, if it's been a struggle for you before and it hasn't felt good going through the process, then, you know, there's a high chance that you'll end up in that place again. And that's the last thing that we want. It's part of why we're here having this talk is just to help you guys. So hopefully you have a better chance of getting to where you want to be. If you have failed and you are struggling and you want to make a change, you know, consider reaching out to somebody that, you know, you trust somebody that you vibe with that can support you in your journey. Somebody that's been there before, somebody that knows how to get you the results that you want. You have your goals. And a lot of times we shut down because of the not knowing how to, what mm -hmm. what do you need to do to get there and it was suggested think about yourself a year from now you achieved that 
theme, that goal, whatever it is. So you're it's here January, you're thinking, okay, hey, we're on New Year's Eve next, you know, December 2024. Imagine yourself achieving that. How would you feel? How would that make you feel? And then look back. So look back at what was the roadmap? What are the things that you did that got got you there, hit it bang on, you might, might, you know, be able to look back and then you see the roadmap blank. You have mm -hmm. no freaking clue <laughs> what to do, depending on what the goal is, of course. There are certain things that, I mean, if you're in that pattern and it's been years and years and years, and you've tried and tried and tried, you might be looking at yourself, okay, next January or New Year's Eve, I'm going to be celebrating and I will have achieved that weight loss goal, the, the healthier me, you know, less uh, pain, perhaps that might be something that is a goal before you can do the weight loss, because you've got to correct some things that are going on in your body so that you can move in a way that's going to not create more pain, right? Um, so slow little steps, I think it was Dean Graziosi that said, uh, a small hinge can swing a big door. So those small little things can create great change, right? But if you find yourself, you know, looking back and looking at that, the, the roadmap of, you know, what are the things I need to do or um, to get me here, and you have no clue, you absolutely look to the people who have the experience, first and foremost, and the know-how to take you, you the individual, not a cookie cutter thing, you the individual, the whole you, the physical, oh. emotional, mental part, like all of that. It isn't just, you know, movement and I'm going to lose the weight. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, which is oh, not oh. the reason of how we got to where we didn't want to be, right? Exactly. Um, but again, keeping it as a positive vision. And, and I had said earlier, if I keep this going, if, if this is the pattern in my life that's going to continue, where am I going to end up? And if that's not a place you want to be, then switch that out for where you do want to be and either create that roadmap or get the support from someone to help you change, mm -hmm. make those small little changes that can impact your life in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to add to what you're saying, Doris. Um, if you've created a nice and clear vision of yourself, you get really clear on where you want to be and who you want to be in a year from now, you can start right now making decisions that are in alignment with that. You can ask yourself, what once you're clear on where you're going and who you want to be, you can ask yourself now, it's like, what would my future self do? If you're stuck on making a decision right now, it's like, what would my future self do? You start doing that. As long as you're clear on who you want to be and where you want to get to, then you're going to start making better decisions just based on that alone. So there's a tool that you can start utilizing right now. I have about four more, probably three or four more uh, points to hit about why people struggle to keep on track with New Year's resolution. We've talked about some of the more human internal things, you know, subconscious mind, your the patterns that you have from your life, um, limiting beliefs, um, other human pitfalls like having a negative mindset, right? We've talked about some of that, but there's also the external world as well. And when I say that, one of the biggest problems is time management. And that's a challenge to get in order too. And I know that I've worked with, uh, I think we've worked on that at different times, Doris. And honestly, I'll, with almost every single person we've ever worked with, we have to look at time management. We have to look at schedule. We have to figure out how things work for you and your life, which means that, again, you know, that, that has to be completely individualized because everybody's life is different. And not only that, you have to... You have to have process in place where you're looking at this stuff regularly. So over time, you can organize what you're doing in these different areas of your life, right? In terms of your time, in terms of all the different holistic health things we mentioned earlier, um, things that are more specifically related to what we're talking about, let's say nutrition, exercise, you know, figuring that out. That's a process. It's not something that happens in one day. It's not like, here's your plan. 
go. <laughs> That's not going to work, right? Those things need to be individualized as well. So yeah, time management is a really big one. Not having the right knowledge, right? The educational process with when you're trying to move forward and get the results that you want in terms of health and weight loss, there's knowledge that needs to be taken in and then decisions have to be made off that, right? If you're empowered with the right knowledge and then you're making the decisions for yourself as opposed to somebody telling you what to do, there's a big difference there. And it's a lot more transformative that way, which is why working with a coach can be really, really helpful because coaching isn't about, you know, somebody telling you what to do. Coaching is really about you being empowered with knowledge and making the right decisions for you based on what you learn about yourself and the knowledge that you've gained, right? So that you're actually making decisions. And that's what's the most transformative thing is to actually make the decisions yourself based on what you know. If you don't learn in the process and you just do something somebody else tells you, you might get to where you want to be. But if you don't learn anything in that process, you probably are not going to stay there, which is, which is a whole other story. Unrealistic goals, lack of planning, inadequate tracking, um, not acknowledging our progress, which gives us those nice positive emotional boosts along the way, which helps keep us moving forward. A loss of motivation, which is for many different reasons. Uh, we didn't get into talking about values and how that plays into motivation, but there's a lot of times there's a loss of motivation. And, you know, one thing that we did mention earlier is the whole all or none thing. Sometimes people just go all in, they go hard, they don't know what they're doing. They just try to work hard. Um, that can only go on for so long. And say that you want to, your weight loss is your goal. Getting healthy is your goal. And you think that going to the gym is what it's all about. And you go like seven days a week. Well, that's not sustainable for most people. So, you know, you're going to burn out at some point. So burnout is uh, another problem that people usually face. I'd say a lot of times the, la the lack of motivation comes from having unreasonable expectations. Um, and, and, well, I'd say those are probably two things. Unreasonable expectations, burnout, um, and also not looking back at the progress that you're making because that is motivational you know when you see progress that's motivational but you don't want it to only be progress within your weight right if you're just looking at your weight and that's your metric that's not in my opinion the healthiest thing it really isn't right because it happens if you don't lose any weight for a week how are you going to feel i'm well, not not that great when that's the thing you're aimed at but if you're tracking other metrics related to your health it's a different story you can make no progress with your weight you can maybe learn from that, but also still feel good about the progress you've made in these other areas and the fact that you even followed through on your process goals. So the actions that you decided to take that week, because you know what, if you, if you start out right now and you're like, okay, I think this is what I need to do for this week based on everything I know, and you make a plan and you follow through on that plan, you don't get the result. Well, you know what, it's not all about that result. More importantly, you follow through on the steps that you decided to take. That is more important. And that actually is a big part of building belief in yourself, setting out to do something and doing it. That is actually probably the most important thing because guess what? If you could always do that, maybe you didn't have the, maybe you don't have the right plan. As long as you keep evolving that plan and keep working away at it, you will figure it out over time, right? Um, and just uh, something you just said there, Adam, we talk about motivation and being consistent and disciplined. And a word I heard, heard this year that really, kind of does stick with me is the word persist persist mm -hmm. until you succeed persist you know some people maybe aren't making new year's resolutions they're not even at that point yet but when you look in the mirror can you honestly ask yourself where are you right now it can be you know a range of different things because success can mean different things to different people. What I consider to be success for me could be totally different than what somebody else is. So many different things you can consider yourself, you know, successful with. But wherever you are, you know, where are you? Why are you here today? What are the things that you did to land you in a positive space, right? And what are the things that perhaps didn't serve you in your current situation? Sometimes that does mean, like we talked about earlier, looking at that dark side. So where am I going to end up, right? Um, and then you can start to, you know, craft your story and change your story once you 
kind of know with that clarity you talked about, then you can focus. So you can persist and be like, you know, all over the place. But that's not necessarily going to get you to where you want to be because, you know, we procrastinate, we waste time on things. So looking at that time management and, you know, what does your day look like? Uh. And what am I wasting my day on? So you can look at those the things that are not serving, whether you want to call it a goal, your intention, your theme for the year. What's not serving that? And what little thing can I eliminate? Right? Right? So what little thing can you shift that's going to create time for you to get to that um, end in mind? Yeah, and I think it's so important to take note of where you're spending your time. I often talk to people about uh, values-based scheduling, right? The time, yeah. your your values and where your time is distributed, you want those things to be in line. If you take a look at, at where you're spending your time, like literally write that all down, figure out where you're spending your time. Well, generally, if you wanna make a shift, you're going to have to change the habits in your life. So you're gonna to have to redistribute your time and you're gonna to have to like doris was saying make small changes in the right places so you need to know the right places and i know you mentioned something about that uh, dean graziosi said earlier it's like uh, what was that saying the one about the hinge yeah yes so a small hinge can swing open a big door All right so imagine you you change this one little thing one little habit and then you do that consistently over time you know that could make a massive difference and sometimes that's why working with a coach helps to a large degree because they can actually reveal your blind spots and we all mm -hmm. have blind spots we all have biases in our in the way we see things and our perceptions right so you know if you haven't gotten the results that you want in a particular area of your life no matter what it is right it could be in your career it could be working out it could be in your weight loss it could be in relationships no matter what it is yeah. we all have blind spots so it's good to actually ask questions and uh talk to people who've had success in these particular areas and a lot of times we don't we're you know maybe we're not uh, as curious as we best be in life but you know if you're if you're struggling in a particular area guess what reach out to somebody who has had success in that area so small things lead to big changes and i found the two things that i didn't talk about yet we briefly touched on one and it's that we often underestimate um, the human side, the mental health side, the shadow side, right? And figuring that internal landscape and give, just really getting it down. Like, and one thing we talked about is, you know, cultivating a positive mindset. That's helpful, many ways to do that. There's various processes that has to happen, right? Like I've had, I've had many, people do different types of journaling because that's what they needed to process things on a regular basis not everybody's done that but for some people it's been a very necessary part of the process where you have to fit where we had to figure out it's like how how many times a week do they need to do that right for how long when and you mentioned habit stacking earlier it's like that's a great great process by the way yeah. habit stacking which is basically you know you look at the things that you're doing already in your life and then stacking something on the other end of that so you know maybe maybe you go into the kitchen and do the dishes you know or you know that's something you do once a day so you could think of something that you might want to do right before that or right after that if it's once a day maybe if it's something that you need to do multiple times a day it's like you could think of a location or something that you do multiple times a day and then take that other action at that same time it's a lot easier to do that than to actually have to think about you know stopping and taking a particular action so habit stacking is great um and the one thing that we didn't talk about doris yeah i don't get into it deeply i'm just going to throw it out there is unsustainable diet plans that is a big reason that people fail we've we've heard about it a thousand times people have tried diets and fallen off of them and one thing i'm going to say to go against the grain here is that diets inherently aren't bad you know getting to the point where you are eating in alignment with where you want to be, which might be on a particular nutrition protocol or a diet, you know, the process of getting there um, 
I, I think it's, it's important to be gradual and know why you're going in that direction, choosing something that'll work, work for you. So why I say that diets don't, aren't inherently bad, because the truth is, if you want to lose weight, generally you're going to have to restrict your, something within your nutrition. But the thing is, is that the thing that I could restrict and not have it be hard for me to do might not be the same as it would for, say, Doris. Like, I might be great with fasting, right? So I could use intermittent fasting, you know, cut down my eating window, that will restrict my calories, and I can sustain that for a long time. But maybe for Doris, that doesn't work. The process I normally go through is people, with people is educating them on all the different aspects of nutrition so that you know exactly why you're eating what you're eating as opposed to getting on any particular diet. But like I said, diets are, aren't inherently bad. There's definitely some that are better than others. I'd suggest choosing wisely because there's a lot of um, bad diets out there that aren't actually as healthy as people think they are. And I would say that almost anything that's not balanced is probably not a good idea because, so you know, something like a keto diet, for instance, it's like, what's going to happen there? So you have high protein, but you also have high fat. Well, that might not be good for your gallbladder, right? It might not be good for a few things, and it's been proven to be that case, right? Yeah, As an we example, we had a family one... member who ended up with getting having to have their gallbladder out, and they and they were asked, "What's your diet like? What's what are your eating habits?" and and it was keto for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and the the doctor just shook his head and said, "You know." get off of that like that's what landed you here basically yeah you know what moderation and balance is important it's like doris maybe you can handle a lot of fat and maybe i can't right so mm -hmm. unless you know that because you can do some genetic tests where you'll actually know if your body handles it well or not actually but if you don't know that then you're going to want to have a balanced diet so golden rule here you know, moderation is where you want to be. So you want to find a nutrition plan that is balanced and you want to figure out, you know, how you, where it needs to be at for you. You want the things that you're eating to be, you know, not too far from where you're at because you want to make small changes for the right reasons that you've discovered along the journey. And honestly, that's a big part of sustainability too, is gradually going from where you are towards you know, maybe it is a particular diet or just, you know, that there's a particular uh, nutrition plan that you know is good. You just don't want to jump from wherever you're at now to there, though, because guess what? You're either here or you're there. And then if you're not doing that, then where are you? Well, you're going to probably be back here, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's either you're Unless you're going to learn a different, or different way. <laughs> right? It's always yeah. end up being all or none again. Yeah, and I just wanted to touch on something you, you mentioned a little bit about the why. It's not just as simple as ask yourself why and there's one answer. Like, can, can you talk about that seven layer deep thing where mm. um, if you go through that seven layer process, mm -hmm. and, I, and I know Dean Graciosi does this as well, by the time you get to that seven, six or seven why, you, you switch from your mind, your brain, mm to where your heart's speaking. And so when you can attach your goal and intention to your emotion, then you, you basically have gone from your head to your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have a better way of filling in the gap of what's in between to get the thing done because that powerful why, sometimes it's more than one, but Know, based on whatever that intention is uh, for, the, for this example. Can you kind of talk about that? Because I think that is really a powerful process. And going from your head to your heart, once you get to your heart, you can find, you know, you get deep enough and you'll find the emotional reason that's driving you. And I've actually, I remember talking to a personal trainer that was um, on my team years ago. And I asked him why he was working as a personal trainer and then he told me he gave me that answer and then i reflected on that and then asked him why about something related to that and and kept going through that process until he realized that and that's it wasn't my intention it was just a conversation we had but by the end of that conversation we did exactly that process we got that seven wise deep where you move from your head to your heart it's like these are the things you're thinking of all of a sudden it's like wow 
now I know the emotional reason. And the emotional reason for him was something that was from his childhood. He never realized that until he had that conversation. And as soon as he realized what that reason was, now he understood his motivation for everything he did. And from that point on, his motivations completely changed. He ended up moving away from the field because once he understood that, he also understood, you know, to get clear on where he wanted to go. So um, mm -hmm. it's really interesting what you can do with that process. But in talking about the why, you wanted me to talk about how that's important in uh, propelling one forward. Why is having that why <laughs> mm -hmm. important? Okay. Knowing your why, it's not just knowing your one why right there's multiple different whys that you'll discover in the in the journey if you're going about it the right way and you're continually reflecting and you're looking forward you're looking at where you're at you're planning forward looking back and learning from that you know you're going to discover multiple whys. like since we're talking about you know health and weight loss and new year's resolutions and that's a lot of times where people are at well first question is ask yourself why if it was weight loss why do you want to lose weight right why do you want to lose weight and usually you'll get a surface level answer at that point right and it's like well why that thing whatever the answer is it's like okay well why that right yeah or why is it, why is that why is it important for you to blob whatever the thing exactly. is why is that important and, that, yeah. that's the, and that's the usually what happens when going through that process it's like why that why is that important to you right and there may be a couple other questions similar to that but it's usually why why is that important to you and you know, part of the process I go through with people is to give them the a values assessment. So, you know, you figure out what's most important to you. Is it career, family, faith? And when I say faith, I mean, it's almost spirituality. Because faith, spirituality, same kind of thing. It's like your thoughts, beliefs, um, feelings, you know, your emotions. It's all those those deeper things. I consider that all part of, let's say, faith. So not in a religious sense, but more in a spiritual sense right so maybe that's important to you so how you feel right so how you feel career family once you figure out what that is say it was what example do you want to use doris pick one maybe one is career well, let's say that career was your highest value so you're a very ambitious ambitious and driven person right and career is important to you so if you're looking at your health and looking at losing weight it's like you want to understand how that is going to impact your career, right? Your career is important to you. So you're going to be motivated by things that are going to help you within that career. So it's like, you know that if you lose, say, 20 pounds and you drop a couple of dress sizes, that you're going to feel more confident, that you're going to be able to wear that clothes that you want that you feel even more confident. You're going to be able to walk into a meeting and take command in that meeting, right? You're going to have more energy. You're going to have more clarity. You're going to have more focus, right? You're going to be able to hold more things together at the same time. So if you've got a high-level job, an executive position, that you're going to be able to handle that. You're going to be more emotional resilient, right? So you want to know all the things that getting healthy and losing weight and getting fit are going to do for your career. And that is one way that you're going to create motivation. Because I'll tell you, there's multiple ways to create motivation, but that right there is definitely something that i dig into with everybody that i ever work with because it's one of the best ways to create sustained motivation right yeah. you have to have all these other things in place too to make that possible but sustained motivation is what we need because you need to be consistent long enough to get the results that you want yeah yeah awesome so adam um someone listening in someone would like some support with that adam where's the best place to reach out to you best I, place. The way I, if you are needing someone to help you i highly recommend adam I, my personal experience my family members experience you know people in his group that i'm in seeing the shift and transformations it's it's amazing and i would highly recommend if you are looking for someone to connect with to help you on your journey to change, positive change. Adam's your person. So <laughs> having said that again, where where's the best place to reach out, Adam? Well, first thing I'm gonna say, thank you very much for <laughs> saying that in your endorsement there. And uh, it's been great working with your you and your family over the years. I wanna say hi to Brooklyn, who I saw came into the chat. And hi, uh, the easiest place to reach me is 
on Instagram. I post I post on multiple platforms, but Instagram is my main one. And if you reach out to me there, um, or if you have any questions, reach out to me there. I'm glad to talk to you. Uh, serious, and you've wanted to make a change for a long time. And, you know, consistency has been the problem. I have a program that's based around creating results. That's It's a result-centric program. You know, I've gotten results with everybody that I've worked with, which is a pretty good track record. So, you know, I know it works. So if you feel like you resonate with me just by hearing us talk here, then, you know, it's probably a good clue that it might be a good idea to reach out. But even even saying that, there, there's no pressure. Like when, if somebody reaches out and we have a, we have a chat, there is no pressure there. It'll just be a, an easy conversation and we'll see where it goes. So I encourage that. So Instagram at Adam G Arbor, that's A-R-B-O-U-R. Um, reach out to me there and be glad to answer any of your questions for sure. And when I post replay, I'll put Adam's contact in the comments so you can check there as well. Um, if you listen from the beginning, we talked about, you know, why, you know, 80 to 92 percent of the time New Year's resolutions don't work and why, what you can do instead. I do have a, an ebook that if you'd like a, the power to be, Basically, you have the power to be. You just have to start. And this um, booklet can help you figure that out. So if you like that booklet and on how to figure out, you know, what, what is your theme for the year, you can put ebook in the comments and I'll get that off to you. It, it was created in 2023. And it, it's basically what I started with. And then from there, I did a 30-day challenge. Week one was nutritious uh, foods and fueling your body the right way. A week two is, you know, looking at rest and digestion. We know that sleep can affect a lot of things as well as our gut can affect a lot of things, right? Movement. So sometimes we think about exercise and the, the, the thought gym comes to mind. And there's no way that, you know, some people are going to step foot in a gym. But if you think of it as movement, then there are lots of different things that you can find that are aligned with you to get you moving. Of course, our metabolism, which I, I think we're going to be talking about this year as well, it's a very complex system and there it affects many aspects of our life, like energy and sleep. So which comes first? Does the sleep affect my metabolism or my metabolism affect my sleep and energy and on and on? And so we can look at that and ways to boost our metabolism. And then you can use sort of that 30-day cycle which is kind of what I've done in, in implementing the support one-on-one -on -one with Adam. So I started with a 30-day challenge and made some changes, but I knew I needed more. And so that's how Adam and I connected, and it just brought things to another level. So those are a couple of things. I'll put, put those both in the chat as well. You can take a look, and, you know, that might be a, a safe place for you to start, right? Or even better, like, doing it on a journey with, with a professional who has over 20 years experience and proven results with Adam, right? And right? Yes, uh, thank you for that, Doris. And, and, you know, this might not even be about yourself, but maybe you know somebody else that has struggled and you've seen them struggle and you hear them talking about it this time of year, you know what? Send them my way. I'd love to have a chat with them, right? I'm here to help. I do this because people do struggle with it. And there's a lot of reasons why we mentioned today. And uh, it's literally why I decided to work in this particular area because so many people struggle with this one thing. I could be doing so many different things, but I've chosen to specialize in this. So, yeah, I'm here to help. Free advice. Reach out on Instagram. You think about it. You just think mm -hmm. about it. You know, with what do they say? Without your health, you have but one dream, but with your health, the, the dreams are the endless possibilities, right? Exactly. Without your health, there is no wealth. <laughs> that too. <laughs> In all aspects of your life, right? In all exactly. aspects. And if you're catching the replay, put hashtag replay, tell us where you're watching from, if you have any questions. And again, feel free to reach out. That's free. Let's do this, 2024. 2024. Out of everything we talked about, be intentional about your health. That is one of the most important things. Without your health, what do you have, right? So exactly. 2024, I was going to give one recommendation. Be what you're saying, Doris. 
Be intentional with your health. It pays dividends for you and the people around you. Thank you very much, Doris. All right. And uh, so we'll see you all again maybe next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hope, to, hope to see you there. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now.